I'm actually filming this one a day early. It is Saturday evening because tomorrow, Sunday, when I usually knock these out, it's gonna be a grinder. I have a morning trip, get home, turn and burn to a friend's dinner. It's gonna be a, a, a crazy one tomorrow on Sunday. So I'm knocking this out Saturday evening, just spent an entire day in the water, um, fishing a fun derby with a whole bunch of buddies, something we do every year. And uh, yeah, it was a good day, honestly. Uh, we'll get into it a little bit, but uh, me, my two younger boys, Ben and Brody, took home the W. Got the W, got big bass, swept the moolah. It was fun. They're happy. They got a little extra spending money, a little extra cash after today. Now we're gonna talk about what worked this week, how we caught our fish, uh, what went down. It was a busy week, it was a hot week. Uh, we had uh, sp uh, camp start for fall football already. I'm coaching sixth grade tackle. So yeah, pretty much everything and anything that could be thrown at you uh, as you uh, wrap up July and jump into August happened. The Blackfish Classic happened. That happened on Monday. Congrats, co congrats, congrats, foreshadowing. Congrats again to Grant and Lucas. Grant, we've been Lucas Neal for punishing everybody uh, they had pretty much a three pound victory uh, they did have a three pound three and a half pound victory over second place with 23.51 pounds for five bass on minnetonka on monday for the blackfish classic the seventh annual blackfish classic 100 boats hit lake minnetonka on monday trying to win fifteen thousand dollars in grant and lucas uh, beat out the crowd well earned well deserved two great kids um, I say kids, they're out of college now, but I've known Grant since he was younger. Pretty cool to see that victory go home with both of them. So Blackfish Classic was awesome. Minnetonka was firing. Weights were much higher than last year. Last year it took 15 pounds to cash a check, top 10. This year it took 17 something, almost 18 pounds to cash a check. I think 17 even got you like 40th place. I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but it was way down there uh, respectfully so the, the bite was firing on Tonka a lot of people using a spinning rod a lot of people fishing offshore weed line type stuff uh, caught some fish doing that as well guiding this weekend today so water temps they're shooting up into the upper 70s low 80s for surface temp today I think we had 82 and a half degrees surface temp uh, and we were up near Garrison. We were up near Mille Lacs. So it wasn't like we were down here. We were an hour and a half north. And water temps when we left the lake this afternoon were 81 and a half to 82 and a half degrees surface temp. So things are happening. Things are shaking up quick. The fish are pressing out deep. You're finding your patterns of window where these fish are going to feed at certain times. That first three hours of light tend to be better than most. The evening hours again start to find another feed window, feed bag. Uh, time of day uh, and, and that was consistent all week uh, we talk about weed lines we talk about uh, spinning rod fishing right we, you hear that often and, and what I'm talking about is a lot of anglers are looking at outside weed lines to find their fish now I'm not talking necessarily super deep outside weed line 20 25 feet of water although there are some fish I'm talking bass specifically in those areas I'm talking still 8 to 15 feet I'm talking if you're not snagging it through the weeds once in a while, you're not getting better bites. You might not, might not even be getting many bites at all. That's that way on Chisago, or Chisago chain, Minnetonka, West Metro. Uh, that's the That was the, the bite today. Uh, we caught majority of our fish, our better fish in that 10 to 15 foot range, uh, eight to 15 foot range on Tonka. I, I throw eight feet in there on Minnetonka because there's a lot going on from eight to 10 feet on that lake. A lot of people forget that depth is important at times that's where some of the hard bottom is where once you get to 12 14 15 feet you lose some of that hard bottom it seems like that eight nine ten foot range holds a lot of hard bottom gravel rock that kind of substrate so i do throw the eight foot mark a lot at on tonka where if i go to shisago and other lakes i might be 12 13 14 16 feet of water so don't negate a little shallower water on lakes like Tonka, Waconia, that eight, nine, 10 foot stuff can be real fishy on big fish. So spinning rod, uh, a lot of people are throwing a spinning rod. They're throwing a Ned rig. They're throwing a jig worm. Uh, some big bites last week came on a mighty head, an all-terrain mighty head, full Senko, full Kamita, 
full large TRD, right? Any of those sorts of things. That was a big, big pattern this last week. It plummets fast, it gets down there quick. Uh, it does entice fish on the fall, but it hits that bottom and it causes some commotion. If you put any fish in your live well right now, whether it be for a derby or on a guide trip or whatever it might be, they're coughing up crayfish, chunks of crayfish. In fact, today we had a bass, a small one, a one and three quarter pounder, maybe two pounds, I don't know, cough up a full, full size crayfish. And it was our boat pet for an hour. The boys thought it was funny. We put it on the casting or the, the cockpit of our boat and the thing clawed itself around and walked around a bit until we eventually released it. So it burped up a very fresh crayfish. So they're honing in the bottom of the lake. That's where these heavier neds are playing a key role. That's where that full jig worm, full Senko type bait is playing a role because it gets down there quick. It makes contact with the bottom. Bass are going down. You can watch it on active target. They are chasing that bait down and they're easily, easily and quickly picking it up off the bottom. For us, the ned was king today. That's what paid us was the ned head. Uh, we used a fifth ounce, uh, even a six ounce, Ned head, chartreuse, green pumpkin body. This is a Ned Ringer from Mr. Twister. We caught him on that. We caught him on uh, the BLT from Crush City. We caught him on Z-Man stuff. Brody and Ben were going back and forth from all kinds of things. But uh, this Ned Ringer here, green pumpkin back, chartreuse head. Brought home some money today. And the setup I'm using, I'm using that Stealth setup, that Stealth rod from Thorn Brothers. I've talked about it a few times. I had some people PM me uh, last week when I mentioned it. It's a new blank from Thorn Brothers. It's a custom blank. It's not a St. Croix blank. It's not a Predator blank. It's it's a less expensive blank than the Predator blank, but I've really grown to love this blank. It's super sensitive. This rod built out is 250 bucks. It's not 400 or 450 bucks like some of the customs. Real sensitive. I can feel the bike. Great guy train. And then I'm pairing it with a Miraval Shimano, the 2500, 3000 series, 15 pound braid, 832 suffix braid to a eight pound or maybe a 10 pound, depending on how rough my clients are. No offense, any of you that are watching because you want to hoist fish in the boat, just like me. This is actually 10 pound on my personal rod because I like to boat flip everything. That setup gets it done. And I'll use the same setup for jig worm, Ned Rig, the Mighty Head, Kamita, Senko situation. This works extremely well. Same setup I used and we talked about earlier in the year with the Scope TG, that tungsten Scope TG from All Terrain with your favorite minnow bait. So this was my workhorse today. This got it done on a lot of fish this week. Spinning rods in the summertime, it's where it's at and uh, it's just very efficient and very comfortable to fish with. We did use a bait caster a decent amount. I'm gonna show you another technique that we caught some fish on. We flipped a decent amount today. Uh, we threw some frogs. The flipping's a great way to catch fish. I had Ben and Brody flipping today. They caught a few. They're starting to kind of figure that game out a little bit, but flipping, punching is an easy way to do it. I have a video on YouTube on uh, flipping, punching. Real simple setup for rigging that. But the other bait we caught a bunch of fish on was a swim bait. We're using a largey smasher, or this is actually a smasher. I take that back. This is not the largey smasher. There is a Smasher and a largey smasher from All Train. This is just the smasher, a little smaller hook, a little more compact. I'm using a Mr. Twister Sassy Shad. Everyone's heard of this bait. It's been around longer than I think I've been alive. This is the four inch version. They have some new natural colors. This is gonna be more of your shad, kind of your Tennessee shad. It's got a green pumpkin top, blue, little translucent color. Looks really well in the water. You can see that tail. Pitch that out there. I can s slow roll that, I can let that hit the bottom, I can hop it back to the boat, I can pitch it in cover, I can fish it deep. I'm fishing a, six, a 14 or 17 pound fluorocarbon on this. This happens to be 17 pound Daiwa camo fluorocarbon. That setup right there caught some big fish this week. This bait right here comes in a variety of colors uh, and everyone out there has probably heard of the Sassy Shad. You probably have fished it at one point in your life. Maybe you've given up on it. There's so many variations now. I have jumped back on the bandwagon because they have some cool colors. This is a, a newer version of the mold. You can see I'm trying not to even move that tail. It's got a lot of action. A little taller, a little thinner profile than a lot of things. Tracks very well in the water. But that Sassy Shad, four inch, Smasher all train head, deadly combination this week. 
Like I said, I'm fishing 17 pound fluorocarbon. I got a seven foot six heavy action rod. I can sling this thing a country mile. I can throw it through the coontail. I can throw it through whatever I want. I can fish over rock. It is a big fish magnet. So that was kind of my one, two punch today was the spinning rod, Ned rig, swim bait, bait casting setup. So that was kind of my one, two punch today. And I feel confident I could use that anywhere I fish this whole week, Chisago, Tonka, I'm going to be going to another West Metro Lake tomorrow on a guide trip with a couple kids in the morning. Probably deploy both of those things as well. So that's kind of what's cooking. Caught some walleyes earlier in the week during the rain, during the overcast. Um, those fish were relatively stingy. Uh, caught them on a jig worm, a modified jig worm. I was actually using the new salt infused uh, Mr. Twister. If I have one here. I don't know if I do or not. I was using the new salt infused ringworm. Their ringworm has salt in it now. You're going to see that becoming a common theme going forward. Salt into more of their baits, which is awesome. So the salt infused ringworm in my boat with a drop TG head caught some walleyes this week. Uh, I have not targeted a lot of walleyes going back to Wisconsin next weekend. Going to play at the cabin a bit. Hopefully I have a little bit of a summertime walleye report for you. We talked panfish last week, did not chase many panfish this week, I'm just being honest. I was pretty much in bass mode, other than a little bit of walleyes on the rain day, I was pretty much in bass mode. And I just uh, gave you the beans on everything we did to catch fish. So here's the bright side. It is hot outside right now, it's starting to pick up, the wind's starting to pick up. Tomorrow's supposed to be in the 80s again, I think we got some scattered storms coming through. Then Monday, I don't even know if it's gonna hit 70 and they're calling for a bunch of rain. And then I think every day next week, if my eyes didn't play tricks on me every day next week, it looks like it's gonna be in the seventies for highs. First part of August, almost unheard of. Get outside and go play. It's gonna be a great week to be on the water. Hopefully you get a chance to get out there, utilize some of maybe your summer vacation that you've been saving up. Looks like this next week's gonna be perfect. Last week was hot stagnant got into the 90s a handful of days next week doesn't look like that's going to happen it looks like it's going to be sweatshirt weather all morning which is going to be super nice we started in blackfish sun shirts and shorts pretty much every day this week the second the sun came up it didn't even give us a chance to put on a hoodie so that's kind of what we're looking at the coming week ahead i would imagine the patterns are going to hold even though it's getting cooler don't think anything weird is going to happen here everything we just talked about will work for you this next week don't be afraid to fish a drop shot definitely works as well so a drop shot something we could definitely talk about a lot of ways to catch the bass right now but that's what's working for me get out there have some fun get somebody else involved in fishing uh, for those of you that were a part of the contest a week or so back i shipped out your stuff thank you again we had a great following on that i will definitely do something again i'll give away more of my tackle as we go into fall maybe some ice fishing baits maybe i'll give away some of my ice fishing baits this fall in anticipation for the upcoming ice season. So have fun this week, be safe, hydrate, set some hooks for me, and we'll talk to you next time.